tonight on Reporting Scotland. A senior consultant says the NHS here is on red alert because of a shortage of radiologists. One man has died and four others are in hospital after they fell ill on a fishing boat in Fraserburgh Harbour. With fewer Scots looking for jobs, we look at what that means for the hospitality industry after Brexit. They think it's the work, it's too hard for them. They don't want to clean something, like clean toilets. Like, they always think like, oh, we have some other people to do that, yes. There's also more bad news for the resale industry, also in the programme. Claims of a dramatic drop in the number of mountain hares in parts of the Highlands. And Celtic face a testing night in Greece as they prepare for the second leg of their Champions League qualifier with AEK Athens. Good evening. A senior consultant has told the BBC that the NHS in Scotland is on red alert because of a shortage of radiologists. The warning comes as NHS Highland confirmed patients may have to travel to Tayside or Grampian for treatment because of unfilled vacancies. The Scottish Government has promised an additional 50 training places over the next five years. Here's our health correspondent, Lisa Summers. Dr Grant Baxter is a consultant radiologist. His specialty has the highest vacancy rate in NHS Scotland, and he's worried. There's no doubt that currently uh, in radiology in Scotland we are on red alert. Ultimately, we'll, it'll end up being a postcode lottery of who's available to get what procedure. A radiologist is vital to diagnosis and treatment. They interpret scans and are key to spotting things like cancer. But increasingly, they're involved in treatment. Interventionist radiologists perform sometimes life-saving procedures. The Highlands is set to lose its last interventionist radiologist this week. The health board has confirmed in emergencies patients will be transferred to Aberdeen or Dundee. <laughs> that will have an impact on mum of four, Louise Mackay. The radiology department is, is critical to saving my life, to having me be here with my family. Last one. She has terminal cancer and regularly gets infections like sepsis. It's terrifying as a patient to think that on the occasion where there'll be another infection, I don't know where to go. Jackie and Mick Brett have travelled to Inverness today from their home on Egg. Mick has regular appointments at Rigmore. Having the radiology department without the consultant to do it is like having a garage with no mechanics and everybody turning up to have their cars mended or be mended can't be done. So what's going to happen? It's just lunacy. NHS Highlands say locum cover means most patients won't notice the changes. In the immediate term, not an awful lot will change in terms of what our, uh, what our patients, what the public can expect from the service we can provide here. Um, obviously, we'd all, all of the time, we'd like to provide a better service and we're looking to ways to improve the reliability of the service. But I think and reassure people that there isn't going to be a fundamental sudden change to what's available. Warnings about the situation in the Highlands were first raised over a year ago and some members of staff have told me things have now come to a critical point. And what's happening here is being mirrored in other parts of the country. In fact, across the UK there are not enough radiologists to meet demand, with doctors struggling to meet a backlog in reading scans. There will be patients uh, sitting in these unreported lists who have cancer and nobody knows it. And these patients may well change from having a curable cancer to an incurable cancer. The government says patient safety is not being compromised. They've filled additional training places and are investigating ways to transform the service. I'm satisfied that the medical directors have considered the available options to them and that they're putting in place all the necessary um, interventions that they need to do to make sure that patient safety is maintained at all times. It will take time for any changes to take effect. Doctors hope it won't be too late. Lisa Summers reporting Scotland. Well, meanwhile, the BBC has learned that the midwife's unit at Aberdeen Maternity could be closed until the end of September due to staff shortages. NHS Grampian announced in May the unit would be temporarily moved to the Labour Ward for about three months. But the Health Board has now said this will continue until new recruits start in the autumn. NHS Grampian has reassured patients they will still receive the best possible care. 
A man has died and four others are receiving treatment following what's been described as an incident on board a fishing boat at Fraserburgh Harbour. Emergency services were called to the town just after two o'clock this afternoon. Police say one man was pronounced dead a short time later. Well, our reporter, Rebecca Curran, is there for us this evening. And Rebecca, do we know what sort of incident this is? Well, Jackie, we're still waiting for more details about the exact nature of this incident. What we do know is that emergency services were called here around two o'clock this afternoon. There was a huge response, police, fire, Coast Guard and also members of the Scottish Ambulance Service were called here and police say that followed a call of concern about uh, three men who had apparently fallen ill on uh, the vessel just behind uh, the vessel behind me there uh, called the Sunbeam. Now police say that after emergency services arrived here, uh, sadly a short time later, despite the best efforts of everybody involved, one man was pronounced dead. Now, four other men have been taken to hospital where they're being treated. Police say they believe that their con uh, condition is not life-threatening. And as I say, uh, we don't have a huge amount of detail, but it's understood that the vessel, the Sunbeam, was stationary in the harbour at the time of the incident. Police say uh, they're still trying to piece together what happened. Their investigation is at a very early stage. Uh, that investigation will also include a team from the Health and Safety Executive and also the Marine Accident Investigation Branch. And this evening, the MAIB have confirmed that they will send a team of inspectors uh, to the scene here at Fraserburgh Harbour as part of their investigation. Police, meanwhile, have confirmed that the family of the man who sadly died on board the Sunbeam vessel at Fraserburgh Harbour this afternoon have been informed. Thank you very much, Rebecca Curran there. A 46-year-old man has appeared at Paisley Sheriff Court, charged with the murder of Kevin Bishop, whose remains were found at a house in the town yesterday. The 32-year-old's dismembered body was found behind a house in the Gala Hill area of the town more than two weeks after he was last seen by his family. David Collins, who was also charged with attempting to defeat the ends of justice, made no plea and was remanded in custody. And police are treating the death of a man whose body was found in a house in East Renfrewshire last week as unexplained. 37-year-old Lee McCracken was discovered at the property in Anderson Drive in Newton Mearns. He was found on Friday afternoon. Police say inquiries are ongoing to establish how he died. They're reviewing CCTV footage from the area and have appealed for help in tracing Mr McCracken's last movements. Unemployment in Scotland has fallen again. There were 115,000 people looking for work in April, May and June. That's down by 3,000 on the previous quarter. Overall, Scotland's unemployment rate is 4.2%. That's just over four adults in every 100. Over the same period, 12,000 more people were in work. Well, with fewer Scots now searching for jobs, many industries have recruited heavily from Europe and the challenge of Brexit is a concern. Well, let's cross to our business and economy editor, Douglas Fraser, who's in Edinburgh. And Douglas, you have been assessing the hospitality industry. That's right, Jackie. Yes, Scotland's reputation for hospitality brings a lot of people here, but it's often offered by foreign nationals. They're the ones pouring the drams, peeling the potatoes, making up the hotel rooms. And we've got confirmed today that since the Brexit referendum result, there's been a drop in the number of EU nationals working in Britain. That's a particular problem for the hospitality industry because of that dependence. Yes, in a big city centre, a grand hotel like the one behind me, but even more so if you're in the back of beyond at the end of the Glen, which is where I've been to find out more. Away from it all, the braes of Balquidder, Rob Roy country. An old farmstead, now a boutique hotel and destination for foodies, but to have remoteness with quality, you need quality staff willing to live away from it all, all year round. Because of housing shortages, Monachail Moor provides non-luxury accommodation for 20 staff here. It's one of many struggling to fill vacancies. Such hotels depend on migrant labour from Eastern Europe to do the jobs others won't. No one wants to work on housekeeping. No one. I, I have so many CVs from Czech... Poland, Hungary, everywhere, but no Scottish women or you, from UK, yeah, no one. They don't want to clean something, like clean toilets. Like, they always think like, oh, we have some other people to do that, yes? 
An industry survey last year found 43% of people working in hotel jobs such as housekeeping and waiting tables were not from the UK. Whatever happens to Brexit, it seems inevitable that such recruitment will become tougher. For me, Brexit is uncertainty. And I think that's the biggest problem. You know, because even though we might have people who are transient only here for one month, traditionally six months a year, but, you know, we've got lots of people who've come from Europe who have stayed here and made UK their home. It will be a huge challenge. And for us, for a business which is growing, it will definitely impact on how we grow our business. Far from misty glens and heaving with festival visitors, Edinburgh is an attractive city for internationally mobile hotel workers. But what if the labour pool becomes much shallower when they need work permits and visas? If the labour pool um, gets smaller, we have to think of different different ways of, of filling that. Now that could either be uh, doing more to attract parts of, of society that we really haven't been able to attract before and I would look at older workers as one of those. I wanna be like you. These are good days for Scottish tourism but with low unemployment and Brexit ahead a shortage of quality workers may limit its future growth. Well, Douglas, week after week, we hear bad news about jobs in retail, but there could be some good news tonight about the store behind you. Yes, now behind me is the Fraser store, the only one in Scotland that was due to close down. Out of 31, more than half the house of Fraser total were scheduled for closure because of problems within the company. Well, you'll recall that on Friday, the company went into administration. The assets were bought by Mike Ashley of Sports Direct. He said today there's been a change of plan. He wants to keep a majority of the total 59 stores open. We don't know which ones, but it does mean that there could be, there may be a reprieve for the people who work here and, of course, the people who shop here. But, Douglas, bad news today for home base. Lots of stores closing throughout the UK, including Scotland. That, that's right. Uh, it's, there are big problems there for this uh, company, Home Base, which sells equipment for DIY, for gardening, for homeware uh, as, as well. Uh, it's closing one out of every six store, stores across Britain and uh, Ireland. It's already closed uh, 17, but with a new announcement, that's another 1,500 jobs going to be affected. Uh, Scotland is taking the brunt of today's announcement. Ten out of 42 stores uh, are in Scotland, from Inverness to Hoyk. That's partly due to competition, particularly from online, but it's also because some years back the company shifted away from offering homewares which were intended to bring more women into the stores. They wanted to focus more on men who do DIY, and they paid a heavy price for that. Thank you very much. Douglas Fraser there. A man has been seriously injured after being rescued from a burning garage in Edinburgh. The man in his 30s is being treated in hospital after the building collapsed on top of him in the early hours of Sunday morning during an incident in Morden. Police believe the fire was started deliberately as part of a feud that's understood to involve motorbike gangs. Officers say they're following a definite line of inquiry. There's a claim that the number of mountain hares on grouse moors in the Highlands is down to just a fraction of what it was last century. A study drawing on data from one of Scotland's most renowned ecologists suggests they are down to less than 1% of what they once were. But land managers say that doesn't match what they're seeing on the ground. Our environment correspondent Kevin Keane reports. They're majestic mammals whose colour changes with the seasons. But this secretly recorded film shows that mountain hares are regularly culled by shooting estates where they're seen as a threat to the grouse. And it's one day in March 1958. Now this renowned uh, ecologist says their numbers in the East Highlands are a tiny fraction of their levels in the middle of the last century. Looking at the long-term data, places which were just moving with hares until then uh, now, you wouldn't see one, or you might see one in the, in the winter, uh, and that, that was a colossal change. One of the best moors we know, it costs about £4,000 a year rent. for. Dr Adam Watson has been an authority on the Cairngorms for many decades. His detailed records stretch back to the Second World War. Then he was just a boy of 14. I've got this mass of fieldwork for 1943 uh, coming up to date. That's uh, 75 years. 
and lifetime. Hares are an important prey species for some of our most endangered and iconic birds, but they can carry a virus, which passes to the grouse, which are so important to our shooting estates. Top predators like golden eagles and indeed white-tailed eagles are of conservation concern in their own right, and the mountain hare is an important prey component for those species. So probably through reducing mountain hare densities to very low levels, uh, we are limiting, the, limiting the, the population of golden eagles indirectly. The study's findings are disputed by land managers who say the decimation described is not recognised on the ground. The levels of mountain hares on managed grouse moors can be extremely high and uh, our members find this is a situation, I mean it is simply not that they're disappearing, they're actually um, uh, quite difficult to contain at some times. Some groups want hair culling banned entirely, but Adam Watson says that wouldn't be necessary if proper controls are put in place to ensure their continued survival. Kevin Keane reporting Scotland in the Cairngorms. A man who helped a gunman carry out a double shooting has been jailed for 12 years for attempted murder. 47-year-old William Edwards was one of a three-strong gang which targeted James McSorley and his friend Craig Burns in a lane in Hamilton in 2016. Edwards was caught months later in England and boasted he should get a medal for his part in the attack. He then denied being involved but was found guilty after a trial. Oh, it's just after a quarter to seven, a reminder of tonight's main story. Radiologists issue a red alert, warning unfilled vacancies are leading to a postcode lottery of services. And still to come, Celtic kick off in Athens in the next 15 minutes. They have to score to stay in the Champions League. A charity set up to help armed forces veterans cope with mental health issues is calling on the Ministry of Defence to collate figures for the number of former soldiers who take their own lives. The call follows increasing concerns about veterans, some struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder. In Edinburgh this week, productions being staged at an Army Reserve Centre are highlighting those issues, as Aileen Clark reports. An upsetting flashback to a moment in a conflict which still comes back to haunt. But this is an actor at the fringe. For armed forces veterans, the trauma caused by witnessing the casualties of conflict and personal loss, combined with adapting to life after uniform, can be too heavy a burden to bear. In recent days, those involved in veterans' charities have heard many sad reports from all around the UK of former servicemen taking their own lives. If we look at the last eight days, we know about six veterans, they could be serving, we're not exactly sure of the circumstances, but a lot of it has come through social media. And that in itself tells a story because if we're finding out through social media, through the Facebooks and the Twitters and stuff like that, well that, that in itself highlights that there should be another stream of more reliable data and information that's coming back and not relying on social media. He is backing the petition to get official statistics, which the Ministry of Defence could use to assess if there are higher suicide rates amongst ex-service personnel. This production at the Fringe in Edinburgh is part of the effort by the Army in Scotland to raise awareness of post-traumatic stress disorder. We're trying to encourage this openness about mental health issues to make sure that people don't bottle any issues up they have and that they're fully aware of the kind of support mechanisms they can access, whether they are serving currently in the armed forces or whether they've left and they can access uh, organisations like Combat Stress. The Ministry of Defence today stressed every suicide is a tragedy and say we've increased spending on mental health to 22 million per year and have set up a 24-hour military mental health helpline to provide advice. All veterans can access specialist medical support from the NHS and charities. And they say work is at hand to monitor suicides amongst Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. Not far from this fringe show over at Holyrood, there are plans to look at how to better record personal details of those who take their own lives. So it's not just the most recent occupation that's noted. In Scotland, what we're looking to do is we're working with NHS colleagues to see how we might find a way to work around that and get that information recorded so we do get to the bottom of whether there is a specific and enhanced problem in this area and that would allow us to address it. 
those supporting veterans through difficult days say such information could step up the help available to those who stepped up to serve their country. Aileen Clark, reporting Scotland. The Scottish Labour leader says he has 100% confidence in Jeremy Corbyn, as the UK Labour leader is embroiled in a row about anti-Semitism. Mr Corbyn has attracted a storm of criticism for attending an event in Tunisia, which included the honouring of Palestinians suspected of involvement in the Munich Olympics massacre. Well, our political correspondent, Andrew Kerr, joins us. Andrew, is it possible to assess how much damage this is doing to the Labour Party? Well, Jackie, this saga has been running since the weekend, so I think it is damaging the Jeremy Corbyn leadership. The Daily Mail published pictures of Mr Corbyn attending that wreath-laying ceremony in Tunisia. That was back in 14. Now, the paper claimed that the founder of the Black September terror group was being honoured. There was a plaque there remembering the founder of the Black September leader. Of course, Black September murdered 11 Israeli athletes at the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. Now, the Israeli Prime Minister has stepped into the row and this issue has been going on in Labour. This issue of anti-Semitism has been running on and on. So I spoke to the Scottish Labour leader Richard Leonard and asked him if this was damaging the Labour brand. Jeremy Corbyn has shown himself to be somebody who is a leader who's commanded support. His uh, success in the general election last year, uh, the way he led the Labour Party, I think is a testament to his style of leadership. Uh, look, there have been some damaging things uh, going on inside the Labour Party. We need to get those sorted out, but I've got 100% confidence in Jeremy Corbyn as the leader of the Labour Party at a UK level. Now, Mr Corbyn has refused to apologise. He said he was commemorating the victims of a 1985 Israeli attack on the PLO in Tunis. But this row continues. We've had internal criticism from the former Scottish Labour leader, Jim Murphy, of Mr Corbyn's leadership. So I think it is damaging as this row just seems to run on and on. Jackie. Thank you, Andrew. Football now and Celtic need to score in Athens tonight if they're to stay in the Champions League. The Glasgow side are without injured striker Odson Edward for the tie. Greek side AEK are the hosts after a one-all draw last week. Our senior football reporter Chris McLaughlin reports from Athens. The sound of lazy Greek summers in Athens, it's hot, dusty, all pretty predictable. For some in the city, it's been the summer of discontent, something Celtic fans are not used to. For days, the headlines have focused on a manager frustrated. He's going nowhere for now, but the pressure is on. Yes, it's been a very, very tough week. They drew with AEK at home, that 1-1 one, one draw, which was an ideal result. Then they go into the league and they get beat against Hearts at Tyne Castle. Never easy, but they, it's a defeat. And then, of course, the speculation around Boyata. That in itself then heightens all the speculation and then it forces Brendan Rodgers coming out uh, to, to meet his players and tell them that he's going nowhere. That will be welcome news to the players who trained at the Olympic Stadium last night. But defender Dedrick Boyata is missing, he says injured. But this man knows speculation about the club blocking a big move is essentially denying him a big player. He's been with us over these last couple of seasons um, and of course at this present time uh, it would have been great to, to have had him here um, but he's not and we, uh, we have to put the faith in the, the, the squad of players that, that want to be here and want to fight for the result um, and, and that's my focus really on, on the players that we have. Well, the headlines back home focus on the Celtic manager here. As you can imagine, it's all about AEK. In this football mad city, there's a real expectation. The locals are confident, but so too their visitors. In Greece, triumph or tragedy awaits. Chris McLaughlin reporting Scotland, Athens. Andy Murray has been knocked out of the Cincinnati Open in the first round by Frenchman Lucas Poulet. He was beaten 6-1, 1-6, 4-6. Playing in his fourth event after nearly a year out with a hip injury, the Scot said he felt below par and inconsistent against the world number 17. You know, I need that, that sort of that consistency on, on, on the tennis court and right now I'm, I'm having to balance the 
you know, the, the weeks when, when I'm off playing, I'm still spending 78% of my time, you know, working on the, the physical side and the, <clears throat> the rehab and a lot less on the tennis. And hopefully as the year goes on, that flips the other way. Well, to the weather now, and Judith. Thank you very much, Jackie, and a very good evening to you. The clouds broke above the silvery tea, and indeed we saw some sunshine across the northeast and highs of 21 Celsius as well. But we're not quite out of the woods yet, still a very changeable weather pattern. We look at the pressure chart, low pressure just to the south of Iceland, throwing out weather front after weather front, and you can see the isobars get tighter over the next couple of days as well, so stronger winds coming our way too. But in, at the moment, it's largely dry. Some evening sunshine for eastern Scotland in particular particular. During the overnight period we'll see cloud increasing in the west but clear skies developing in the east and we'll see some rain just starting to show its hand across the southwest corner. It's the next weather front approaching along the freshening southwesterly wind. Certainly not a cold night at all. Look at those temperatures well into double figures. So it starts off on a mild note if not humid tomorrow. Some early sunshine across eastern Scotland I think towards Caithness and perhaps Northern Isles as well. But that rain across this southwest corner extending into North Argyll, Loch Harbour, starting to get its act together, cloud extending across the country, outbreaks of rain, pulses of rain crossing the country as we head through the course of the day. So come the afternoon, it's a breezy old picture for the Northern Isles with that rain as well and strong winds along the north coast as well. I think Aberdeenshire should see less rain and more drier weather. Drier includes generally across eastern Scotland but the temperature is still quite high, 20, 21 Celsius. You'll notice the humidity in the air. In the southwest, still dull with outbreaks of rain. Some heavier pulses of rain coming into North Argyll La Harbour into the West Highlands and eventually into the Western Isles during the afternoon as well. And uh, winds strong along the West Coast too. Quite a blustery old day. Into the evening, that rain band continues to push away. Then it does maybe brighten up before dusk and then dry overnight initially. Some clear spells, some showers into the West. Showers from the word go across Western Scotland on Thursday. Heavy, blustery showers, fewer in the east, more in the way of sunshine. You'll notice it a brighter day. You'll notice it a cooler day on Thursday as well. And it certainly will be a windier day too. That's your forecast, Jackie. Thank you, Judith. Now a reminder of tonight's main news. A man has been arrested on suspicion of terrorism offences after a car was driven into security barriers outside the Palace of Westminster. Three people were injured. And a senior consultant has told the BBC that NHS Scotland is on red alert because of a shortage of radiologists. And that's Reporting Scotland. We'll be back with the main evening news at half past ten. Until then, from all the team, enjoy your evening. Bye-bye.